Hello everyone, this commentary will be presenting how heat is transferred. How is heat transferred? Heat can travel from one place to another in three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. Both conduction and convection require matter to transfer heat. If there is a temperature difference between two temperatures, heat will always find a way to transfer from a higher temperature to the lower. On to conduction. It is the transfer of heat between substances that are in direct contact with each other. The better the conductor, the more rapidly heat will be transferred. Metal is a good conductor of heat. Conduction occurs when a substance is heated which causes particles to gain more energy and vibrate. These molecules then bump into nearby particles and transfer some of their energy to them. This then continues and passes the energy from the hot end to the colder end of the substance. To understand conduction, let's think about an experiment in which a metal can containing hot water was placed within a styrofoam cup containing cold water. Heat is transferred from the hot water to the cold water until both samples have the same temperature. In this instance, the transfer of heat from the hot water through the metal can to the cold water is sometimes referred to as conduction. There is nothing physical or material moving from the hot water to the cold water. Only energy is transferred from the hot water to the cold water. Other than the loss of energy, there is nothing else escaping from the hot water. And other than the gain of energy, there is nothing else entering the cold water. Thermal energy is transferred from hot places to cold places by convection. Convection occurs when warmer areas of a liquid or gas rise to cooler areas. The cooler liquid or gas then takes the place of the warmer areas which have risen higher. The results in a continuous circulation pattern. A heater in a cold room is a good example of these convection currents. To understand convection in air or fluids, which are somewhat similar, let's consider the heat transfer through the air that is being heated by an electric heater. Air present near the coils of the heater warm up. Air expands when heated and becomes less dense. So as the air warms up, it expands becoming less dense causing it to rise. Differences in air density between the bottom of the room and the top results in the gradual formation of a convection current. As the hot air rises, it pushes some of the cold air near the top of the room out of the way. The cold air moves towards the bottom of the room to replace the hot air that has risen. As the colder air approaches the heater at the bottom of the room, it becomes warmed by the heater and begins to rise. Once more, convection currents are slowly formed. Air travels along these pathways, carrying energy with it from the heater throughout the room. Radiation is the transfer of heat by means of electromagnetic waves. The energy is carried by these waves and does not involve the movement or the interaction of matter. So the radiation can even work through the vacuum of space. This is why we can still feel the heat of the sun, although it is 150 million kilometers away from the earth. The hotter the object, the more it radiates. The sun obviously radiates off more energy than a hot mug of coffee. The temperature also affects the wavelength and frequency of the radiated waves. Objects at typical room temperatures radiate energy as infrared waves. Being invisible to the human eye, we do not see this form of radiation. An infrared camera is capable of detecting such radiation. The energy radiated from an object is usually a collection or range of wavelengths. Hotter objects tend to emit shorter wavelength and a higher frequency radiation. Polished metals are excellent heat reflectors. As a consequence, they make poor heat absorbers. Rough surfaces absorb more heat than highly polished ones. The color of an object affects its absorbing power. Black surfaces absorb radiant energy while white ones reflect it. Thus, white garments are more comfortable on a hot day than dark colored ones. A black object is black because it is absorbing all the visible wavelengths falling on it and reflecting none. A white object is white because it is reflecting all the visible wavelengths and absorbing none. Thank you for your attention. We hope you learned something about energy transfers.